Hey guys, Lena here, and today I'm going to be explaining why and how I am doing my game. My game is a, going to be an adventure RPG style in the 3D model style. I will be explaining what I'm doing for my game, how I've been writing it, how I've been drawing the characters, and what I plan on doing to hype it up and do various things. I want to explain why I sound very weird. But first of all, I'd like to get this out of the way. This is not for everyone. Believe it or not, if you suck at one part, you can still do it. If you can do two or more parts, like for instance, I can do the drawing and writing, and I'm learning how to code, I can do this sort of thing. So, I'm going to first go into why I'm making my game. So, I want to be able to create a stable job for myself. One where I'm able to create my own game. Now, since I'm in America, I don't have as many options as those in Japan. But I want to be able to have my own game. One that is self-published, kind of. And though I may not be able to create a company yet, I still know what I want to do for my game. So now I'll be explaining what else, like how I did, how I've been doing it. So first of all, let's look at some free programs. I use Vroid for the main model making. Blender 2.779 because I have an older computer. Don't ask how old it is. But you can also, it's very easy to find. I use Krita for the main drawing programs. As well as Medibang Paint and Ibis Paint X. Ibis Paint X I use on my main device, not my computer. But though Krita is the one I suggest if you mainly can only do on computer. I use Ibis Paint X because of the accessibility, though Krita is when I've been migrating towards it. They're both very simple and free to use programs. Now, how might you want to go about this? How would you want to plan out your storyline? The way I started with this was I was going off my first ever story, which I talked about my first ever character on this channel. And I won't go into depth, but she's the reason the whole game exists and i sort of built on that idea you've seen the various steps on my channel as well probably how i've developed the story how i went to from the base to the writing to creating new stories connect with it then going to as far as going to literally about to animate a series now you don't want to animate a series Unless you can create all the rigs and that. My suggestion is to do a chibi style. That will make it a lot faster. Though I won't provide my bases that I use for creating my characters and that. It's still very easy and simple. Now I use a unique anime-ish realism style. And I won't explain it to why or how I made that style. But it is a style that I use personally. And I would also like to say that you don't exactly have to be the best at art. You could be great at writing, and that would be perfectly fine for creating a game. You would just have to find people willing to create the art. For me, I'm going to be doing all three aspects of it. The writing portion, now, you want to think about what's your overall idea. Now, this will go into spoiler ter territory for my game, so if you don't want any spoilers... So you can skip to the time stamp. Hope oh, time stamp. Hopefully on screen, if I didn't forget. But the way my idea works is, I'm going off of my original idea, building on the original Shadow Adventures and turning it into a game called Moonlit Adventures. And it will be about a duo. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I told you it was like Genshin Impact. But you'll be able to swap between the two, and. It's going to be very fun because Moonlight and Dane, it's going to be a really interactive story. All the characters are very unique. Raito, Kage, all of them. My personal favorite, though, is Yamara. She may have a simple design, but her story is really fascinating. I won't go into spoilers, but she has a cool design, and she's my main model. And no, she does not look like me. But my personal favorite city is <laughs> Naravai, which it's, there's a little joke I have. It, 
the ruler will get on your nerves because Naravi sounds like nerves. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I really think though. So, so an idea you might think about doing, depending on your religion though, may change. I personally am a Christian, but my main theme, once I decided on the base plot, how it was going to go, how it was going to end, I decided to go on a theme for the cities. My theme for cities was Seven Deadly Sins, or Nanatsu no Sunito Basu, Seven Crimes and Punishments in Japanese. There are various covers of the song by Mothi on YouTube. You can search it out. But that sort of gave me a base inspiration for each of the cities and their rulers. Uh, I can go into a lot of detail about each of the rulers and what they share with their sinner. But I really would like to touch on the drawing portion of it now. So, if you, if you would like me to go more in-depth, I'll definitely go more in-depth. <laughs> I could talk about it for hours, honestly. But for the next part, which is the drawing part, really all you need are some chibi-style bases or anime-style bases, or whatever sort of style you use. Bases for that, and you'll be able to start drawing. Doesn't matter what program you use, whether it be Photoshop, Krita, Ibis Paint X. Personally, I use the Ibis Paint X to sketch base models. For instance, my main model that I'm currently working on without going into too much spoilers, is uh, one of my first characters I've shown off on this channel, Eris. You may remember her. She also goes by Tigerette. But I've been working on that model alongside Changeru and Glumet. I've already finished Moonlight's model, and I don't mean the chibi model, I mean the normal model. I've finished Jilmara's model. But really, like, it, it can actually get quite simple. I've managed to be able to expedite my work process to be quick. When I say quick, I mean really quick. To the point of where it can take me just a, like an hour or two to finish a model. Meanwhile, at the beginning, whenever I was first creating the game with the first model I made, which took like four hours. And no, I'm not joking. That genuinely took four hours. Moonlight's only took three hours. Moonlight's first model, which was a 3D-ish style 2D model. But Ruby's took four hours. Now, though, <coughs> though I may not m know much about coding, I'll tell you this much. If you have an older computer, you can use Godot. That's the one I'm using. Because, <laughs> again, I kind of have an older computer. But, really, the sky's the limit with your game. You can really do anything you want to. If you want to create a fan game from Moonlight Adventure, yeah, go ahead. I won't stop you. Just please do keep it not 18 rated. Because I will report anything 18 rated that I find about Moonlit Adventure for going against copyright. Anything else is fine, just as long as it's not 18 plus. Like, I won't care. And it'll probably be very good. Because knowing people, they'll make very good fan arts. But... Now, since I still have, like, six minutes or so, I want to go into more depth about the writing portion. <laughs> so, whether you believe it or not, I go random for writing. <laughs> so, this is where you'll want to click off for any and all spoilers. But for the first script, it's a really- there's many very funny scenes- and overall, it's like, it's kind of random, but it sort of all ties together in the overall arc. So I'm going to briefly go over all the cities, their rulers, and everything about that. So the first city is the Sin of Gluttony, or as I call it, Corinthia, which was derived from the name Conchita, which from Avilius Chronicles is the Sin of Gluttony, or Master of the Graveyard if you want to get technical. But then for the second city, Marinia, which was actually taken from the, not the <laughs> corruption, it was taken from Maria, one of the main characters for it. Now, that one is my personal favorite, and I will explain a bit of the boss mechanics as well, so be warned if you don't want to know the boss mechanics. But really, it's going to be funny, 
with how, so I won't explain how to solve it, but the way it will be is that it has like this puzzle sort of room. You can explore it endlessly, sort of if you were to do a random D&D &D get game like and have an infinite dungeon where if you were to explore more you could get more loot but you wouldn't be able to get to the boss now for the third city my favorite oh i should also mention Marinian has a ball like it has a ball with all of the cities so it'll give various spoilers for instance if i were to go to the beginning of the chapter two which i'm working on chapter two act one if only we could be friends again now i won't explain why it's called that but it is very interesting how they, once Kyle, the ruler, decides on someone, and before, someone just is just like, oh yeah, I know one of the other rulers. Well, he doesn't state that outright, but still it's funny. He reve they talk about a ball that they're going to be with, because they say, with the recent change of ruler in Corinthia it should be a ball so we may introduce our people to the new ruler and her advisor now I won't go into why that happened but it's a good one now for the third city it's a rundown city but it's going to be very technologically advanced not the most technologically advanced that one I'm saving for last and I won't go much into detail so it's sort of the sin of lust if you've seen rose Krantz's video for um muzzle of nemesis you'll see how it says a lust for money that can also be put into a lust for power which is what i did now for the fourth city i simply call it the doll city the doll city because the ruler is sort of like the doll now for the fifth city the city of zavist oh wait right i forgot to share the fourth city name it's Namu, and I won't explain why it's called Namu, but it's it's Namu for a reason. Now, for a reason, the fifth city is Zavist, which, if you actually translate it, it's Z Zavist is envy in um Zek. The, and I won't explain why I chose that, but it will very much be cool. The sixth city, the one that I've gone into depth the most on this channel is the Gem Empire. The Gem Empire is home to the original protagonist of this idea, Gona Ora. And I don't want to explain why I called him that. It was just a stupid name choice. But I also would just like to say the corruption of greed is coming along nicely because he looks cool. Now for the final city, Mesto Hinevu. The most technologically advanced city. Also, if you want to know the relationships between the city, just search the Avilius sin correlation. You'll find it very easily. <laughs> so, if you so Mesto Hinevu is Rath's city, and Jack, I mentioned Zavis was Envy in Jack earlier, but is one of the great ones, and the ruler is actually the friend of the person who was close to Kyle, the ruler. Like, literally, it's like, like, just like, are you coming to the party from, Hin to Hin are you coming to the Hinevu party? And I won't explain what happens, but it's overall very hilarious and funny. But Mesta Hinevu has a man ruler. Most of the rulers are female. Five of them, literally. <laughs> well, one of them is a doll, so technically gender neutral, but I see it more as female. But I really just, if you manage to watch through my whole rant about my game, which I'll probably go into each city in detail and probably each character design and all of that. And I won't ask you to subscribe because honestly, I don't care about the numbers. I'm just thankful for the loyal fans that have stayed here from the beginning. Now, I just would like to say one last thing before we sign up, off. I just want to thank per at Paris the Pup on DeviantArt for letting me use my OC for a little mascot for the game. She's a really cute orange blob. She created her, and I did get her explicit permission, but I will not be able to play a voice clip. I d she could confirm this. She can confirm this. But anyway, guys, signing off. Bye.